Hi, and welcome to our community garden. Traditionally, we hold our first work be for the new gardeners to become familiar with the garden and getting to know each other and the garden committee. Unfortunately, this year, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we are not able to have the event with all the new and returning gardeners. Instead, we decided to create a video and provide the information needed for our members so everyone can benefit from it without coming to the garden. First, I would like to show you the garden plot and where different sections of the garden are located. Then one of our most experienced committee members, Don Ragush, will provide the most essential information you will need. First, there are over 100 plots in this garden. There should be a stake with the plot number on your plot so you can identify the plot that has been assigned to you. There is a black compost bin by the school parking lot to dispose of your garden waste. If the bin is full, please do not put your garden waste next to it. Wait until the bin is empty or take your garden waste home with you or leave it on your plot. All members are welcome to take mulch from the pot provided by the city to improve the quality of their soil, reduce weed growth and water lo loss from the uh, soil surface. Please take enough so everyone can have some. For those of you who have decided to volunteer for our garden, you will soon be contacted by your team leader about how you can put in your five hours of community service this summer. Please respond to your team leader when they contact you. Thank you. Welcome to Varsity View Community Garden. And we are fortunate that Bishop Marie School and the Catholic School System has donated this land for us to be able to use and also in association with Our Lady of Lords Church. So it's open to all gardeners and we like to have all gardeners from anywhere to come and uh, join us. Some refugees from the church uh, have plots on this land as well. Just a little history, James Perkins approached uh, Dave Knight, who was the principal here, because he thought to have a community garden in this area would be just a great idea. And uh, Dave Knight, who I used to survey with, uh, contacted me, and I've been involved. I have been involved in three gardens for 20 years at that time. And he says, "Do you think this will work?" And I says, "It certainly will. We have a good group of volunteers who can get through the community, and we can make this, uh, I think, one of the best community gardens in the province." So that's where it started. And at this point, this whole area was an empty field and wasn't used in a much extent. But now we'll see uh, people coming here and baking, growing their own food, uh, seeing people. The mental and the physical health that we see here is just absolutely tremendous. We've incorporated a lot of uh, sustainable um, environmental components within here. And so if you can look over on the side here, it's our swale. Now a guy named Sean and his partner uh, Jesse surveyed this whole lot to get the right drainage. So all the drainage comes from the north to the south and feeds these over 70 fruit trees of cherries, plums, uh, apricots, saskatoons, raspberries, choke cherries, uh, apples, a variety of trees that we have here that the gardeners can share in. So that was one of the things we implemented at that time and lots of hard work and uh, hand labor as well as donations from different people. As well as off of the whole church and the school, all the water drains into a pipe that feeds the swale. So none of that water is going through the storm sewer systems to the river. It's going and it's feeding our trees and watering the trees so that we don't have to water them very much through the year. And we've amended the soil under all the trees so it absorbs a lot of that moisture. And it goes all the way along. The water, when it starts on this side, will move all the way to the end because it's lower that end than this end. So it's done by uh, lots of Indonesian people like, uh, for example, uh, Blair, who's been one of our key gardeners here, and the farm boy, who provides a lot of expertise in the watering system and such. Lots of good volunteers that are here. Rebecca is very important in making sure all the gardeners are allocated their spots, and she does a great job administering that. This place is very low cost. So right now in 2020, it costs you $25 if you volunteer some of your time, or $45 if you choose not to volunteer your time on the, on the fruit trees or weeding, the other components that exist within the garden here.
So that's the basic history of the community garden in here and lots of people involved over the years. And if you can look at all these barrels that you'll see here, those were trenched in by hand all the way from the school. At that time we didn't have funds to provide all the uh, trenching tools. So we did that all by hand. So these are filled uh, up through the school. Uh, we have a valve there that Blair set up in the school that fills all of these barrels and then the community gardeners are able to water their gardens at any time to their plots. And we also show how to best use uh, ditches within your plot to use the least amount of water possible because we're very much on conservation and being very uh, judicious about the resources that we use in the community garden that is here. This area here is a uh, community garden that any people on uh, the garden here are welcome to any of the produce here. Now this is where we get the community uh, spirit involved in here where we'll have a team sharing in the work of uh, looking after this area here that's a communal garden for everyone. So sometimes we'll have carrots, tomatoes, a variety of things that will grow in this spot. This year we're going to grow in potatoes in it. So what we ask is people is that when you come by here you have a few extra minutes maybe weed in and around here and especially maybe pick a few of the potato bugs that you might see on and around the plants and Rebecca will thank you for that one so she's not getting phone calls about the potato, potato bugs but again this is a community garden you're in and around enjoy being around here and just you know if you see uh, some uh, some weeds or such just just pull them and then we have a beautiful spot that's looked after everyone chips in and the garden works really well and so this area is quite quite big here and uh, we can grow a lot of different things we have past we've drawn carrots and peas and swiss chard and uh, cucumbers and zucchinis and they say this year we're going to choose to grow potatoes in this spot but uh, every year we choose to grow different different things available and this is a lot of the soil that came from the plots these plots were dug some by hand and each one is 10 feet by 10 feet that people get. 100 square feet, you can grow a lots of things on 100 square feet. And we've moved that soil into there and amended it. And all this soil has been brought in good quality soil. Because originally this was landfill. So when they build uh, in an area, so an area is provided to the school. So the school, so the children have a place to go to school. But a lot of times it may be the low ply part in an area. So this is a lot of landfill that would have been here. So the soil wasn't of high quality. These each plot have been amended. We've got good quality soil in all these, these spots now after, after a decade. We introduced raised bed into the garden so that people who may have some mobility difficulties to getting too low to the ground will be able to garden in our garden. So these we will allocate to people who may have difficulty uh, for gardening on uh, ground level gardens. We want everyone to be able to have an opportunity to enjoy our gardens. One of the issues with uh, the raised beds is that, or one of the benefits, is that they'll heat up sooner in the spring and they'll grow sooner and they produce very, very well, as well as they're easy, a lot easier to weed at uh, sort of at knee level than at ground level. One of the disadvantages is you'll have to water more often in the raised beds because they do, the water does drain off them a little bit sooner. But we have put plastic within the beds and this actually helps keep the moisture in for a longer period of time. To be watering by hand from the barrels, you want to use, again, as least water as possible. So what some people do is they plant so the water runs off. Don't do that. Plant your garden in trenches so that the water will stay where you water it. So for example, if you're putting beans here in this spot, Put your beans in here, cover it with your little bit of soil, and then you just need to water in this area here. And then that will allow you to use less water, need to water less often, and your plants will do the best if you do through this method. So plant your seeds or your plants in trenches so the water does not run off your plot. And you'll be very happy for the less water you'll have to do, as well as the plants will be very happy as well and as well as those of us who fill the water barrels because you won't need as much water to water your plants it's a win there are some insects that are beneficial to have in the garden as you know one of them are bees 
Protecting plant pollinators is the key to planet's food supply. So please protect the bees by not using insecticides, but attracting them by planting their favorite flowering plants. Ladybugs are considered a beneficial insect, which help to control the crop damaging insects such as aphids. The adult ladybugs feed on these insects. Please do not kill them, they protect your plants. However, there is one bug that we don't want to have in the garden, and those are potato bugs. Please look for their orange colored eggs on their side of leaves. Hand pick the bugs, larvae, and the eggs and throw them in the bucket of soapy water to kill them. This is 2020 and because of COVID-19, we are expected to follow different rules at the community garden to keep all our fellow gardeners safe. So the three rules we need to follow is to stay two meters apart and do not use or come to community garden if you're feeling under unwell. And to protect other people, when you enter the garden, make sure that you put on your cloth mask and you wear your cloth mask while you're in the commuting garden. Happy gardening this year and it's good for the spirit, good for the mind and good for our general health and we look forward to seeing you at the community garden.